Today is all about swirls. Welcome to my channel, it's Kaz here. It's 2024 and this is the first pattern of the year. This pattern is going to be suitable for 46 pin machines, 22 pin machines and 40 pin machines. And for this project I'm using this beautiful grey blue colour which is a tweed Aran yarn. The shade is all numbers, uh, M006830. And as you can see the yarn is 72% acrylic, 25% wool and 3% viscose and it's a it's a lovely flecky yarn so we're going to crack on with the project using this this time. As many of you are aware of my Helter Skelter pattern which reminds me of uh, going on the Helter Skelter with my dad when I was a, a youngster, uh, fond memories of that. Um, this one is similar but slightly different. If you remember Helter Skelter went from um, right to left um, this beautiful swirl pattern goes from left to right. Okay, so let's crack on with the project. We're going to cast on as we normally do. Over and under, or back and forth, whichever term you prefer, all the way around the bed of the machine. Making sure everything is under the hooks there. All the way back to the beginning. Put our yarn in our yarn feeder. Zero hour clock. And with all my pattern beanie projects, um, we do four rows to start. So I've got my piece of card under here to uh, stop any issues with my uh, yarn getting missed, as I was having before. If you've seen my other video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Dropped stitches for some reason. And here we are coming up to row four and we're going to start the pattern now and again as with all my projects once we've done our four rows we're going to remove the yarn from the yarn feeder and start our project and I'm going to do 36 rows which will take me up to row 40 on my counter and this pattern could not be easier on the machines I've said 46, 22 and 40 um, I need to do an adaptation for 48, so this isn't going to work on a 48 as yet, but I'm working on that, okay, with a small adaptation. And this, this is not going to be easier, guys. I'm telling you now, you're going to love it. Okay, so I'm going to take my little piece of card out because it pushes it too close to the needles for doing wrapping. So here we go. This is the exciting thing. Wrap two. Now you're all kind of uh, used to the wrap twos and I'm sure you're also used to the knit ones. Okay, so carry on around the bed of the machine, wrap two, knit one, all the way around, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one. And like I always say and I always stress, do not put any tension on these wrap needles, okay? That will be the death of your machine more than likely, all right? You need to have them fitting and touching the needles, okay? But they need to have movement and a slight bag in them, okay? It needs to be just touching the needles, okay? No pressure, do not pull like that. That's a bad thing, okay? So wrap, but gently, okay? Knit one. And really, to be honest, with this pattern, you're not really going to need to think too much because Row one is wrapped to knit one all the way around. Wrap to knit one. And like I always um, say as well, if you bring your left needle slightly higher than your right needle, um, especially on the Addies and the Centros for the most part, it's easier to get to wrap with one hand. I do find the 40 pins a little more difficult to do one-handed wrapping. Okay, so again, gently on the wrap, making sure that you're underneath the hooks there. Okay, otherwise you'll get drop stitches. Knit one, wrap two, knit one. Wrap two, knit one. And you see you come back to one needle shy. Now, all you do is carry on 
with wrap two, knit one. That's it. It's as simple as that. Wrap two, knit one. On and on and on and on and on and on and on for 36 rows. So that's all you need to do. Just keep on going, wrap two, knit one. You can even stop where you are at some point if you get disturbed or need to put the dog out or get a glass of water for the kids or something like that. Because it literally is just wrap two, knit one. Just finish on a knit one and you can't go wrong. Wrap two, knit one. Just keep on going, wrap two, knit one. Now I'm not going to do the whole 36 rows here because it's going to be super, super, super boring and super samey. So I'm going to do a few more rows while we're together and then I'll come back once I've done my 36 and just keep on going don't worry about where you end up or where you start once you've done that just wrap two knit one wrap two knit one okay all the way just keep on going just keep on going no knit rows in between nothing like that just wrap two knit one just keep on going it's a bit laborious but we are only talking 36 rows to do a beanie and of course you've got the option to do less if you want to. You can do the pattern and do some plain rows in between if you want to. Say you could do 10 rows of pattern and a few rows of plain, 10 rows of pattern. Something like that, you know. It's still in the end going to be this beautiful swirl pattern. And it's just wrap two, knit one. On and on and on. Wrap two, knit one. Up to knit one, up to knit one, up to knit one. So there's no complicated, um, well, over complicated stitch routines on this one. It really doesn't become any simpler than this one. No counting to do as such. And I will, as soon as I can, come up with a version for. Um, Central 48 is going to need um, a slight adaptation to get it to flow like this one does on the 46. And this is my speed of real time wrapping. I've been doing this quite some time now so I, uh, I picked up quite a, a speed with it. Like I said, you don't, don't have to think too much for this one. And the result is fabulous. I think you're going to love it. I'm going to do one more row with you guys now. Make sure I'm tucked under there, which I am. I'll do one row like this and I'll do one row close up for you to see. And then I'll continue and finish the pattern section off. Making sure every time you wrap that your yarn is going underneath those hooks, okay? And there we go. Once you've done six rows, you end up where you started from, but just carry on going, okay? Wrap two, knit one, on and on and on. So this is a round out in close-up for you to see. We've ended on a knit one here, okay? So we're gonna start again. So, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, all the way around. Non-stop. Push those um, stitches down if they rise up like that, okay? Because as you go around with these uh, wraps on wraps, then they do kind of get a little bit um, resistant to going down on their own accord. So we need to help them a little bit. And that's all it is, all the way around, just wrap two, knit one, for 36 rows. Push those down as they come up. I 
and carry on going. Don't worry about where you stop, don't worry about where the pins are. We are literally doing just wrap to knit one all the way around the bed of the machine, okay? So I'm going to carry on with that now and then I'll move over to doing the plain rows and um, I'll come back when I start the plain rows and tell you how many to do for that. And here I am, I'm coming up to the last two rows of my pattern and as you can see it's looking absolutely divine in there. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So carrying on now with our wrap two, knit one, pushing down any uh, stitches that rise up, wrap two, knit one, wrap two, knit one, and this is now my very last row, wrap two, knit one, Pushing those stitches down as you need to. going to be my 40th row. So my counter is now showing 40. As I'm back at needle one I'm going to pop my yarn in the yarn feeder. I'm going to put my little bit of cardboard back underneath there. Which if you see my other video you know why I do that just in case because sometimes mine drop stitches. And the other thing you can do actually is to push your thumb a little bit there as well. But it does take the pressure off your thumb if you do use a little bit of cardboard. So what we're going to do now is 80 rows to finish our ear warmer and that will form the brim, the fold up brim if you want one, and the liner. Okay so 80 rows now and I'll run you through the first couple of rows just to make sure that you um, understand what to do at this point because these are quite tight now. So we're going to take our time and again these will try to rise up so if you pop your thumb there at the back of your machine and use your little finger here your second finger index finger I think it's called you can push these stitches down over those red pins okay so you won't get any drop stitches or tuck stitches hopefully and take your time on the first two rows trust me it's worth it it's less strain on your machine and after all your hard work of wrapping and knitting and so on you don't want to lose anything at this point but I always start my beanies with um, a knit and then the pattern because I think if you start with like your 80 rows then you've done all that work and if you do get a problem then you've done all that work and that's a bit of a shame so pushing down Nice and slow, all the way back. To needle one. And once we're back to needle one then, we can do it a little bit faster, but still keep an eye on those. They will start sliding down as they normally should now. And by the time uh, row three comes around, you should be fine and dandy then to just crank as normal. This is just my way of being super duper careful and making sure we get the result we want. There we go. So now I'm going to whiz around now and um, finish with my 80 rows. Which will take me up to 120 rows in total for my beanie. And I'll see you back for casting off. So now I've finished my 80 rows and I've got 120 rows showing on the counter and I've cut a long tail and a quick guide for how long a tail to cut. You just wrap it around the outside of your machine and that'll give you a rough idea of how much uh, tail you need. I've done a little bit longer than that. I've got my needle that came with my Addy which has got a curve on it and I'm going to run through casting off 
um, in real time because there's a lot of people coming into my channel now that are new to circular knitting and I'm being told I'm not showing the complete um, finishing process so I'm going to endeavour to do that. So there's our last stitch. We're going to open our gate and take our yarn out of the yarn feeder and we're going to cast off. So if you're fine with casting off and experienced then you can skip this step and go on to the assembly process and if you're okay with the assembly process you can just skip to the end. Okay so there we go we're going to crank forward a little bit until our first black needle falls down which frees that stitch up. We're going to take the curvy end of our needle here okay we're gonna pop it down in between those two red teeth so the way I do it anyway, and I do it one stitch at a time to start, and we're going to scoop to the part of the stitches closest to you. And it's on the needle there, and just pull our yarn through, and that's how we cast off. We do that for every needle, and when you're more proficient and more experienced, you can cast off more than one needle at a time. Crank forward a little bit, not too much when you're starting off, because that stitch there now is pretty safe because the needle is still above it. When the needle has gone down below, that stitch is prone to popping off if you're not careful. So again, take your needle with the scoopy bit pointing upwards, in between those two red teeth, and scoop underneath that part of the stitch that's closest to you, and pull the yarn through. And we do that all the way around the bed of the machine. And when you're starting off, again now that's, that's free to be scooped up and rescued while that one is still safe. The further you crank on, if I crank on there now, those two are vulnerable. So if you're proficient and you're a bit more experienced and you're getting a bit braver, you can do two stitches at the same time. But when you're starting off, I really, really recommend that you do one stitch at a time and take your time. One stitch like that, one's free to be taken off and one is safe there. And work your way around like that all the way around your machine. For the next stitch I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see a little bit better. Again, keep that one with the stitch um, below the needle so the needle is still keeping that in place. This one is free, the needles drop down below. Pop the needle in between the two red pins there, you can see the two little red teeth. Grab that stitch onto your needle and pull that yarn through. Carry on like that all the way around the bed of the machine. You'll see me move now to scooping more than one stitch at a time, but if you're the first time you've ever done this, stick to doing one stitch at a time until you've got a little bit more experience and a little bit more um, confidence to crack on and do more. Now I'm going to do one stitch, crank a little bit, two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and you can do more if you're feeling confident to do that. But like I said, when starting off one stitch at a time is perfectly fine. Better to get your project off your machine safely without any dropped stitches when you're first starting out than to risk running before you can walk is the saying, isn't it? And trust me, the first time I did it I dropped about four stitches. Other people have different ways of casting off. Some people like to do one full rotation of the wheel and then cast off uh, in one go like that with all the stitches open to dropping off. If that's your style, fine. Run with that, but I'm a little bit more cautious and careful from past experience, that is. So this is my way of doing it. Pull the thread all the way through your yarn tail. And then we've got two stitches left to go. And if you're doing one stitch at a time, it's going to take you a little longer, but you get there. And there's our last stitch. Now, sometimes this stitch will catch, um, in which case just back up your machine a little bit, grab the stitch, and then just pull it off. Other times it, it just comes off fine like that. 
and that's our work now off the machine all we need to do now is to uh, assemble our beanie stretch our workout and see what the design looks like so let's crack on to assembling our beanie and here is our beanie ready to be unfurled let's see what we've got so stretch out your work Isn't that looking lovely? Look at that. So let's stretch that out. Stretch our plain knit out. And stretch from left to right, side to side, to get all those stitches in the place they need to be. Now, if you remember, we cast on with um, four plain rows. We did 36 rows of our pattern. So that's 40 rows to there. And then we did 80 rows for the plain section, 120 rows in total. Now to assemble the beanie, this is the way I do it. I take the plain end, put my arm in through the patterned end, here we go, drag the other end all the way up to the top. And again I'm doing this in real time. There are a lot of new people coming to my channel and thank you ever so much for joining me. Very, very much appreciated. And organise our work a little bit like that. And then it's nice and easy to do this part. We get our tail from the inner part of the tube. Okay, this is the way I do it anyway. There are many ways of doing it. This is the, the way I always go to. And we cinch this one in. Taking care not to pull too hard. We don't want to snap our yarn. And what you'll find now is because you had a really, really long tail to cast off, you've got way too much yarn on there. So you can snip this off to about 8 to 10 inches. And keep that yarn tail for something else, because I keep all my yarn tails. Organise these... Um, gather as best you can on the inside. Leave the tail dangling out. Find the other tail wherever it's disappeared to. There we are. Find the other tail. There it is. Should be in the same place, opposite more or less. And gather that one up. That's why we do four rows of plain to begin. So we're not gathering it in on the pattern. And fold these edges in like that. Nice and neat, nice and slowly. Gathers, adjusting gathers all the way around that cinch as the cinch gets in closer, like that. Pushing those little knobbly bits inside so you get a nice gathered circle. There you can see the circle starting to form. Pull that a little bit tighter. Again, we can snip this to eight to 10 inches again. And now we have two strands of yarn. The one from the inner layer, pull that tight and that one tight. And I always turn mine inside out to make sure that the cinched area is, is nice and neat because sometimes you get a little bit of bubbling there, it's not quite cinched correctly. So turn it inside out and have a check. And that's absolutely fine. And then a couple of little tugs. And then I put a, a knot in there like that. Cinch that up. And then another knot and then I'll do a double knot, so that's wrap around once, wrap around twice, and that's it done. I put my hand inside and stretch out this work then. This is a lovely, lovely design. I hope you like this one, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Very, very pretty indeed. Now with the tails, if you find you've ended up with a slight hole there that you don't like, if you're not going to add a pom-pom, I find the holes quite handy for adding a pom-pom on because you can pop your um, crochet hook through that hole and grab the, um, the elastic on the bottom to attach that. You can put this on a darning needle if you want to and add a few stitches, okay? But other than that, I'll feed these through to the inside and then feed them through the layers. That's what I do. But you can do um, whichever way you prefer. So I'm going to pop mine through the centre there and the centre on the inside. Like that. And then I'll hide my tails inside. By just pushing it through the layers like that, as you normally do. Push it through the layers. Feed it down, feed it down, feed it down. Okay, 
There we go. And then I'll trim that off. And that's my beanie complete. Now, if you want to add a pom-pom onto the top of there, of course you can. Now, if you notice, this beanie is going in this direction. Okay, now if you did uh, my Helter Skelter beanie design, you'll know that the pattern is going from uh, right to left, and this one goes from left to right. So it's very much a different pattern. I think it's so much easier to do on the RD than the Helter Skelter. There's no um, intricate uh, pattern to follow. And that's it, that's the design. That's swirl design for you. And this is what it looks like when you stretch it out. There's lots of people ask what these hats look like when they're stretched on a head. And I'm giving it a really good stretch there. And you can see that pattern holds up really nicely, really well. And of course, if you want it slouchy, then don't fold it up. And I sometimes get asked um, about these hats losing their shape. And yes, they will, um, to a certain extent, bell at the bottom there. You'll get that slight curve coming out. That's perfectly normal. Just stretch your hat lengthways to try and um, rectify it and get it back into its shape. And there you go. So I will endeavour to sort out an adjustment for the uh, Central 48 as soon as I possibly can. But at the moment, this will work for... Uh, Adi 46, 22 pin machines and 40 pin machines. Okay, so add a pom-pom and we'll call our project done. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this pattern tutorial. And if you have, uh, maybe put a like on the project and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Join me over on my new Facebook group. It's the Crafty Cars Collective and I hope to see you there. Take care of yourselves and if you'd like to give a donation to a local no-kill animal shelter or rescue to you, that would be very, very much appreciated. Thanks then. Bye for now.